What's up, YouTube? Brian here. Welcome back to 1517 Films, where in every episode, I'm always contending for the faith once for all delivered to the saints. And on this episode, we're continuing through John Ramirez's former Satanist take on Halloween. Stick around. So if you haven't seen part one, definitely check that one out first. I'll put a tag up above. You can watch that. Then come back and watch this one. So we're mainly going through a video where he makes five arguments as to why Christians shouldn't celebrate Halloween. And we've already gone through argument one in that it gives the devil legal rights to your soul. That just like Ariel and Ursula, you're signing a contract with the devil simply by putting on a costume. But if you think that's ridiculous and asinine, let's take a look at another video. This is the one, actually, that most people will share of this man when it comes to um, him, you know, advocating for why Christians shouldn't celebrate Halloween. So let me just make sure my sound system is good so that I don't get an echo. And yep, we needed to change the output. Okay, there we go. So this is the one that most people will watch. And we're just going to watch a couple minutes here and then we'll go on. If you think putting on a costume is signing a legal contract, this is nuts. The devil's number one holiday is Halloween. The, devil one, the devil's holiday is Halloween. And a lot of believers today, today, you know, they are celebrating Halloween. They are going on and renting costumes, buying costumes, making mm -hmm. costumes, uh, painting their doors, putting pumpkins in front of the door. First of all, the pumpkin, the pumpkin, when you take the pumpkin, you, 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 you represent the demon, the demon that controlled the rivers, which is the demon called Ochun in Santeria. So the pumpkin Bless brings you. the demon into your house when you put pumpkins <laughs> at your door. You see, so, 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 so that demon operate with pumpkins. So when you put pumpkins <laughs> in your door on Halloween as believers, you are giving the devil a, a entry. You're giving that principality, the demon that run the rivers. Her name is Ochun, which is a, a, a you, type of Jezebel in your Jehovah your religion. You're bringing the demon into your home. You're giving it access to your home, access to your family. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Enough, enough, enough. <laughs> So if you put a pumpkin out on your front porch, carved or otherwise, you're inviting a chun. A chun? Bless you! Uh, a chun, that son of a sneeze. Um, <laughs> no, uh, yeah, son of a sneeze. See, um, a chun, and then uh, a chun is son of a sneeze, and then a chun is also the second son of a sneeze, in case you didn't know that. So... <laughs> <laughs> oh man all right uh just <laughs> but let's get into argument two so argument one was legal rights here's reason number two why christians shouldn't celebrate halloween <laughs> Another demonic reason, Anton LaVeyne was a person, he was the, he, he was the priest of the Church of Satan out in California, and, and he, he was a devil worshiper for many... So, Anton LaVeyne, the priest of the Church of Satan, said so. So, another appeal to authority, uh, the head of the Church of Satan, which is only as old as 1966, is the authority on this, not God's word, not Jesus Christ, under whose feet all authority in heaven and on earth has been placed, no, 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 no. The head of the Church of Satan is the authority on this, not like Satan is the father of lies or anything. He was a person. He was the, he, he was the priest of the Church of Satan out in California, and, and he, he was a devil worshiper Ooh. for many, many, many years. He had 8,000 people in his church when he started. I'm not even going to call it church. His demonic building. And one of the quotes that he quoted, he said, I want to thank every Christian parent for allowing their children at least one time a year to celebrate my holiday. And this is coming from the devil's mouth. There you go. Uh, uh, an even higher appeal to authority. This is coming from the devil's mouth. <laughs> because the devil always, always tells the truth. And this is, look, if you want to not participate in the American traditions of Halloween, that's fine. Okay, I get it. If you don't want to take your kids trick-or-treating, if you don't want to pass out candy, if you don't want to dress up or carve pumpkins or anything like that, cool, that's fine. But when your argument is because the devil says, you have no argument. Because the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. And the fact that you put more faith in the word of Satan than the word of God that says, 
that no power, no principality, nothing in heaven above or earth below can separate you from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. When you choose to believe the devil over God, there is a problem with your faith, not mine. So another reason celebrating Halloween is such a, uh, I would say, I would say it's such an eternal mistake. It's because you not only cursing yourself and you opening your doors to devils, whether you then that means not, the devil doesn't own you. If you marry and you're celebrating Halloween, the devil owns your marriage, he owns your children, he owns your house, he owns your finances. That means he owns real estate in your life because you have opened the door to the devil one time of the year. All right, so that's reason number two. <laughs> And you might be saying, Ryan, this is an old video. He is still talking about this. This is from his YouTube channel uh, posted four days ago. He still goes on about this. Blessings, blessings, brothers and sisters. God bless you. This is John Ramirez, your brother in Christ. I just wanted to just really uh, get the opportunity to pray, seek the, uh, pray with you, seek the Lord with you today. At this opportunity really to uh, impart in you the opportunity to understand the critical moment of October, witchcraft month, demonic month, satanic month. Witchcraft month, demonic month. Where in the Bible does it say that any day or any month is, is, is more evil than any other day? Show me that verse, John, where it says one day or one month is more evil than the rest. Show me in scripture that verse. Because I know you believe that because you were a Satanist for 25 years, and that what's, that's what Satanists taught. But the devil's a liar, so you shouldn't trust anything that he says. Demon month. Demon this month. is the time that the enemy is high alert, trying to come against the church, trying to come against the believers, entrapment, setting up open doors, gateways, portals in our lives. Amen. And we need to be armed and dangerous. We need to be up and ready. We need to be alert. We need to have spiritual discernment. We need to really uh, be the one on the offense right now in the name of Jesus. Wow. That is word soup. That is all that is. Word soup. Just catchphrases and theological buzzwords to make himself sound super duper important. So if the if October is Satan's month, and if October is and Halloween is the day that the devil is on high alert, then he really biffed it in 1517. I'm just saying, what happened on October 31st in 1517? Hmm, I don't know. the preaching of indulgences, but of the gospel. Forward this to Rome. Oh, that's right. The Lutheran Reformation, the restoration of the pure gospel to the Church of Christ. That process started on October 31st in 1517, making Halloween also Reformation Day, the day that th this man uh, gets to be a Protestant. Now, there was a Protestant Reformation that happened alongside the Lutheran Reformation, and most Protestants are children of the Radical Reformation, not Luther's. But Luther's Reformation, on October 31st, started the restoration of the gospel to the church. That's what happened. So the devil really biffed it in 1517. But... <laughs> Why did Luther choose October 31st? He chose October 31st because the very next day, the faithful were going to be coming to church to observe All Saints Day. So that's why he nailed his thesis to the door of the church the day before, so that on All Saints Day, they would see. When they were coming to celebrate the victory of the departed in Christ, because he is risen from the dead and so too shall they be, when they came to observe that on, October, or on November 1st, All Saints Day, they found his 95 Thesis. But let's listen to what John thinks All Saints Day is. Oops, that was the wrong video. Um, we got to go back to this one. Okay. You know, and then the day after, the day after Halloween, All, all Saint All Saint Day, All Saint Day, people buying candles and buying candles and celebrating and making uh, different food offerings to their dead relatives. Those are demons, people. You, 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 got, you got Christians celebrating All Saint Day, the day after Halloween, which is November 1st. So how are you going to celebrate these things and call yourself blessed? 
How are you going to celebrate these things and call yourself blessed? Now, granted, I'm not saying offer uh, food sacrifices to your departed relatives. Don't, don't do that. But by going to church on All Saints Day and celebrating the victory that your departed have in the suffering, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, how can you be a Christian and do that? How can you do that? How dare you? How dare you? How dare you pick one day a year to celebrate that someone that you love who has died in the faith will one day be raised again from the dead because Christ died and rose for them. How dare you? How dare you? How are you going to celebrate? It's like, me get, it's like me being married and I'm sleeping with a prostitute, but I love my wife. Oh, I'm, I'm married. I love my wife, but I'm sleeping with a prostitute. No, there's no way that that makes sense. There's no way that you can, you can fit that in someone's mind. So, so the attack, the demonic attack, the demonic stronghold, the gateways, the portals, the, 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 four, the four to five the, generations the, the, being the, cursed. The portals. Today, Junior! It starts celebrating Halloween. Halloween, it, it, people think, is, they look at it, they look, you know, we get caught up with the historical aspect of what Halloween is. But people, that's just a story. The, the, the whole picture of Halloween is that you honoring the devil. You bow down to the devil because I used to celebrate Halloween. The biggest witchcraft that I used to do was on Halloween to kill, steal, and destroy Christian believers, destroy anything that came in my path that week that, that, that I, I was preparing a week ahead of time. As a matter of fact, I was preparing two weeks ahead of time to kill you on the 31st. Well, you missed, John. <laughs> swing and a miss you missed and let me tell you something me growing up i celebrated halloween as a kid i went trick-or-treating i dressed up sometimes it was disney characters sometimes it was the headless horseman uh sometimes yeah sometimes it was fun sometimes it was scary i trick-or-treated i got candy i got to watch um scary movies Probably a flaw in my parents' judgment, honestly, to let me watch scary movies from a young age. But my parents brought me to church on Sunday. I was confirmed. I participated in Sunday school and youth group. And now, I'm a parent. And my children go to a private Lutheran school where five days a week they are taught not only reading, writing, and arithmetic, but that Jesus loves them. And when they come home, we pray at the dinner table. We pray before we go to bed, and I catechize them. I teach them the scriptures and the small catechism. And they also go to church on Sunday, and they also go to Sunday school. So you want to talk to me about fourth and fifth generational curses against people who celebrate Halloween? I have established, by grace alone, a precedent in my household that is greater and grounded further in God's word than my family when I was growing up. So if you're going to use an anecdotal argument, I'm going to use an anecdotal argument, okay? So enough of this pumpkins bring in river demons garbage. The, um, enough of this. It is the most unholy time of year. It's the height of witchcraft, and, and de demons are on high alert because they really biffed it on Reformation Day, and the fourth and fifth generational curse has not touched me because my children are being brought up in the faith much more than I ever was. And here I am, all these years later after uh, trick-or-treating myself and now taking my own children trick-or-treating, talking on YouTube on a channel dedicated to the proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Just saying. Just saying. If you don't want to celebrate Halloween, please don't. Don't. If it burdens your conscience to do it, don't do it. But you don't get to tell me what burdens my conscience. You don't get to dictate my faith to me. Things that are neither commanded nor forbidden in the scriptures, such as Halloween and pumpkins and costumes, none of these things are in the Bible. They are neither commanded nor forbidden. That means it's up to the Christian conscience. So you do your conscience, I'll do mine. Until next time, may God richly bless you in the grace and mercy won for you by Jesus' vicarious death on the cross for all of your sins. I put a spell on you. And now you're mine. <laughs> you can't stop the things I do. I ain't lying. No! No! Oh, don't listen to that! In 300 years, right down to the day 